Hi, Tony here and welcome to episode four on the Royal Interceptor build. Now apologies, these haven't been coming as long as regularly as I would have liked. Uh, I just really had difficulty in getting parts, but the good news is that the parts have started to arrive. So hopefully now we can get things moving pretty quickly and we should get some pretty regular videos coming through with various bits and pieces. This particular one is gonna be short and sweet because I'm just fitting a new set of foot controls. There's nothing wrong with the standard foot controls, but they're a little bit uninspiring and a little bit of a dull looking flat steel bar. Now you could just strip them off and paint them. That would improve them immensely. But I thought I'd have a look around and see what's out there in the marketplace to replace them. And I found these from a manufacturer in France called Le Motograph. Uh, so I ordered a set, they've arrived, and let's get them on the bike. So these are a direct replacement. Uh, you've got everything on there that you need. You've got the pin on the back for the return spring. Uh, everything bolts into the same location. So it should be a pretty easy job. It's just a case of getting this one off, replacing it with this. And as you can see, I think it's going to look a hell of a lot better. It's going to be lighter, although to be honest, you're not really going to be noticing that much difference in the weight of the bike just from changing these but just a much nicer looking piece and a simple job that you can do easily at home in you know 15 20 minutes so there's not actually very much that needs to be undone this little circlip at the back here needs to pop out so that you can lift this bar away from the lever but there's an allen key bolt behind here that runs through which holds this arm in place. In theory you should be able to take the circlip out and loosen that and drop it out of the way but the reality is it's going to be quicker to undo these two bolts so you can move the whole assembly to one side. So yeah that should be a straightforward job let's crack on with it. Actually the most difficult bit for me is filming it because I've got to take the circlip out so it's clipping this circlip together to push it through but to get the camera in a position where you can see that and actually do it at the same time um, isn't easy. So I'll give it a go. Let's see what we can come up with. There you go. We've got it. I'm going to replace that anyway, so I'm not too worried about bending that. There's a little washer on the back. Don't lose that. That pin can come out. And we can move that out of the way. We've got a mark on there for adjustment for length, but it should be the same stock length. So once that's out of the way, we can then just get this moved and we can unbolt the bit here. Not being connected to the bike, this then will just all come off in one piece. Then it's a 12 mil socket or spanner onto these boys. Remember to hang on to this assembly because that is going to drop if you don't. Then that whole assembly just comes off. You can see we can then disconnect this spring and undo this with the Allen key and bolt the new one back into place. And I can go and do that over on the bench. There is a, another step. Inside here is a small sleeve these don't come with that sleeve in that kit, or at least mine didn't. So it's just a case of getting this one out. So the easiest solution for me was to find a socket. In this case, it's uh, one of my long reach thin wall 11 mil sockets that fits perfectly into that hole. And then what I can do is just put that in there and drift it out with a hammer and then pop this back into there. And then obviously remembering not to forget to grease this pin before putting it all back together. There we go, and we've got to loop around that and one through there. There's return spring and it can all go back onto the bike now. Refitting is just a reversal, but whilst that's off, I'm gonna take the opportunity to have a little clean behind there. 
Incidentally, the exhausts have arrived, so the next video you'll see these come off and the new exhaust go on, which I'm pretty excited about. But let's just get these puppies back on. I will check the torque settings for these, but for now I'm going to do them kind of tight-ish. There we go. This can go back on. And then obviously because we've not changed the thread setting on there, we can just find the hole, line it up, push it through, put the washer on the back, and then put a new circlip in. And that is that done. I think that is a really good change. Looks nice. Works exactly the same, obviously, just in case you did lose some adjustment in that. You can adjust that pin at the back, obviously, if you need to, but because these are set up exactly the same as the stock ones, there's no need to change anything there. It should work exactly the same. And doing the other side is identical, with the exception of you don't have the rear brake connected. Obviously, you have the gear selector, and that's a nut and bolt rather than a circlip. But outside of that, the process is exactly the same. So there you go, this one even simpler to do. You've just got that bolt here, you just have to put a spanner on that because that acts like a lock nut. Undo that, swing that out of the way. Undo these two bolts at the back, that all comes off and then go through exactly the same process again, having to drift out the bush. But then you've got this in its place, which I think is really nice, really nice looking stuff. It's not a, a necessary change but it looks so much better than the original one. I'm really pleased with them. So let's just wheel it outside and get you have a look in daylight. So you could well argue, and people probably will, that it's an expensive way to change it when you could just leave them as they are or paint them. Uh, but I like these, they look good. Now I'll put all the details of where you can get these from and the prices down below. And don't forget that these are adjustable for reach as well. You've got a little Allen key in the back there and you can slide that backwards and forwards. That's the same for both the gear shifter and the brake. So that's a nice added feature. You get that bit of adjustability that you don't have on the stock one. So there you have it, a really nice, quick, easy, simple job that changes up the look of the bike. These are indeed very nicely engineered pieces and you've got that adjustability, um, but you do end up paying for that. At the moment, I think if you look at conversions from euros, you're looking at about 200 pounds for a set of these roughly, 100 pounds a side or slightly less than that. I did pay less than that for mine uh, a couple of months ago. They just took a long time to get here because I think they were doing a new production run and prices seem to have gone up from that. We can blame Brexit, we can blame whatever it is, but they are not necessarily a cheap option, but I'm happy with them. I think they look great. I have just taken delivery of the exhaust. That's gonna be the next video and I'm hoping it's going to sound as good as it looks. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, then I've got some suspension sorted out and then we can move on to bars, electrics and all the other bits. So hopefully over the winter, uh, when a lot of people are gonna be out tinkering on their bikes in the garage, we can start to get this through and get the bike finished so that maybe before, but in springtime, it will be completely done and we can get it out and give it a good once over. But I'm looking forward to bringing you those parts. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.